The Pope had just finished a tour of the East Coast and was taking a limousine to the airport. Having never driven a limo, he asked the chauffeur if he could drive for a little bit. Well, the chauffeur you know, didn't feel like he had much of a choice, so he climbs in the back of the limo and the Pope takes the wheel. So the Pope proceeds onto I-95 and starts accelerating to see what the limo can do. He gets to about 90 miles per hour and suddenly he sees the blue lights of the state trooper in his rearview mirror. So he pulls over and the officer comes to his window. And the trooper, seeing who it was, says, um, just a moment please, uh, I need to call in. So the trooper calls in and asks for the chief. And he tells the chief that he's got a really important person pulled over and asks how he can handle it, how he should handle it. It's not the governor, is it, replies the chief. No, sir, replied the trooper. This guy's more important. Is it the vice president, replied the chief. No, even more important, replies the trooper. Is it the president, replied the chief. No, not that person, replies the trooper. Well, who is it, screams the chief. I don't know, sir, replies the trooper, but whoever it is, he's got the Pope as his chauffeur. <laughs> it's one important person. Well, speaking of a different reality, I have just had on my heart um, just wanting to talk with you about um, just prosperity and unlimited reality, just that kind of stuff. Because, wow, can it ever feel scarce sometimes in our life, right? It can feel, as we look at our world, that things aren't really flowing abundantly sometimes maybe flowing abundantly in the direction that we want them to flow. Let's clarify that. And so I thought, well, this is a great time for us to do a little um, kind of metaphysical review about the nature of reality. Are you with me? Okay. All right. So metaphysics, we're going to talk about, and, and if you're new in Unity, what that is, it's just we're going to talk about what's underneath the current appearance of reality, Okay getting underneath the literal. So when we talk about the nature of reality in unity, we talk about a little r and a big r reality, right? Sound familiar? Okay. So the little r reality is what we see. I call it rocks are hard, water's wet. Okay, it's what we can perceive with our senses. We can touch it, we can feel it, we can hear it, we can see it, we can smell it. All right. So, but there's a greater reality, and it's the big R reality. And it's what in unity we call the absolute. Because this reality, regardless of what happens out here, does not change. But that in no way, shape, or form means that it's static. It's dynamic. It's limitless. It's boundless. It's the ceaseless, restless, creative energy of the universe. It is always, always, always available to us, regardless of whether we believe it or not. And the interesting thing about it is, your thoughts do not create this big R reality. Let me say that again. Your thoughts do not create this big R reality. Because this big R reality, that is this amazing, creative life energy that is the infinite wholeness that you are, infinite life, infinite abundance, this big R reality exists whether you believe in it or not. It is. Now, our thoughts and our feelings create our experience of this big R reality. So, 
the question that we get to ask is, where are we putting our faith? And faith in this conversation means what you know to be true, what you have claimed to be true. That's what faith is. And it doesn't have to be, remember, it's not about what you see. Seeing is not believing in this case. And this is really beyond believing this big R reality. It's about knowing it and claiming it. So I know that when I'm stressed out, I'm not exactly putting my faith in the big R reality. Can anybody else relate? Yeah. Yeah. Because really, when you think about it, folks, when we have our faith and when we put our faith, our claiming and our knowing in this big R reality that permeates everything, what is there really to fear? The reality of this big R reality is that if you go deep enough into anything in this little R reality world, you will access this field. And we call it the, in quantum physics, they call it the infinite field of possibility. Many people call it God. Many people call it spirit. But it's just this energy, this infinite creative energy. And so when we have our faith, we either have a conscious or an unconscious faith in this big R reality. Now, when we go, typically, unless you've had some car issues, typically in the morning... When you grab your keys and you go out to your car and you turn the key, you have faith, not really consciously, that your car is going to get you from point A to point B, right? That's an unconscious faith that you know your car's going to work. But a conscious faith, I believe, is what we're talking about that really is going to support us in moving through those times in our life when we look at the little R reality, the appearance, and we get enrolled in it. When we get stressed out, when we get worried, when we get anxious, when we get angry, when we get resentful. And so what came to me to share with you today is one of my favorite Bible stories about faith. From Matthew. You ready? Here? Okay. So Jesus had just fed the 5,000. And so when Jesus would meet and gather with people, he would extend a lot of energy. And often he would go away by himself to pray after he would be with people. So he had fed the 5,000, and so he wanted to go by himself to pray for a while, and so he sent the disciples on in a boat to go to the other side. So it's the wee hours of the morning, and the boat is in the midst of a huge storm, being battered by the waves, and it says the wind was against them. And so here in the morning, All of a sudden, the disciples look out, and there is Jesus walking toward them. And they were freaking out. (laughs) They were terrified. They said, it's a ghost. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart. It's me. Don't be afraid. And so here's Peter. And he said, Jesus, if it's really you, command me to come out to you on the water. Now, can you imagine the other disciples like, this dude is crazy. (laughs) Okay. So here's Peter. And so Jesus says, come. And so Peter gets out of the boat, and he starts walking on the water toward Jesus. But all of a sudden, he starts to notice the storm swirling around him. And he starts to sink. And he cries out, Lord, save me. 
And Jesus extends his hand and pulls Peter into the boat and says, Oh, why did you doubt? And when they got in the boat, the storm ceased. So, Peter, metaphysically in the story, means faith. So, I don't know about you, but I think Peter expressed a pretty brave um, faith. But what Peter represents, folks, is, is working our faith muscle. Because if you remember later, Jesus was denied by Peter three times. So Peter represents the faith faculty being developed in our consciousness. And how, what a great example of how God, he was so clear, he was in his knowing, so much so that he stepped out on the stormy sea, and he did it for a while until he started to get enrolled. Now, can we relate to that? Yeah. So, the truth is, folks, there is an infinite reality. There is a limitless reality that permeates everything, that is present regardless of whether you claim it or know it or not. But the opportunity that we have is to keep walking on the water in the midst of the storm, to keep demonstrating our faith. And there's one more story I want to tell you about someone that demonstrated her faith in a very specific way. And that's Reverend Edwin Gaines. Anybody know who Edwin Gaines is? Yeah. She's a hoot. She's a unity minister, and she has quite the story. She was a single parent, and she was working two demanding jobs, living with her daughter in a one-bedroom apartment, and living what she called to be a life of quiet desperation. And she and her daughter were in constant financial crisis. And they often didn't have enough money to buy food. They would live on peanut butter and crackers for weeks at a time. And Edwin was a really hard worker. And it was important to her to be in integrity with her bills, but the money just wasn't there. And it was just mortifying to her not to be able to pay what she owed. And one day, she was on the floor, and she had her checkbook out, and she had her bills all around her, when all of a sudden, she just had a moment of great despair. And she just yelled out to the universe, I know, and she's Southern, and she grew up Baptist, I know Jesus came for me to live abundantly, but I am not doing that. Show me how. And at the time, she wasn't involved with the church, but she picked up a Bible, and it opened up to the verse, Malachi 3.10. Bring your tithes to the storehouse and put me to the test. If you do, the windows of heaven will be opened to you, and a blessing will be poured out so great that you won't have enough to take it in. So she started reading that verse a hundred times a day. But she was terrified because there was no way that she was going to give 10% of her income. She had heard about tithing in her Baptist upbringing, and she also found her way to prosperity books by Charles Fillmore and Catherine Ponder, but she'd always skipped that chapter. So one day she went to see a minister and share within her struggle, her story of struggle. And the first question he asked her was, do you tithe? She said, no. And why do you preachers always talk about that? So the minister said to her, Edwin, I have a lot of people who are ready and willing to have a spiritual breakthrough practicing spiritual law. You obviously are not. Please excuse me. And he escorted her out of his office. That was some tough love. But she left and still went home and kept reciting the verse until one day the words sunk in. And it was a test of her faith. She goes, why not give it a shot? She goes, if you tithe it, the verse says it'll be proven. I'll get a blessing. 
So she tithed in terror. <laughs> and she would affirm every night, creditors can't eat me, creditors can't eat me. <laughs> and she would give money and not know how she was going to pay her bills. But when any money came in, she'd tithe on it first before anything else. And she'd send it to a place or person who had fed her spiritually. And when her bills came in, she'd write the check, put it in the envelope with a stamp, and affirm she was ready to mail it when the money came in. And all of a sudden, all these synchronistic things started happening. Aunt Mary would send her some money. She'd get money in dribs and drabs, but by the end of three months, her income doubled. As she continued to tithe, her faith deepened and so did her determination and vision. Amazing synchronistic events began to unfold. Jumping ahead, Edwin went on to start a successful PR and consulting business. At the end of her first year of tithing, her income was more than $100,000. She married, she became a unity minister and a teacher of prosperity teachings all over the world. She now has a retreat center where people walk on hot coals. So, folks, tithing is just one example of how we can flex our muscles of faith to know there's a limitless reality. And I talk about it today because it was my biggest breakthrough in my spiritual journey. And for a lot of us it is because money just seems to be where we tend to be scarce sometimes. For others of us, it's time. So the opportunity that we have, and the reason I'm talking about it today, is because I just get, it is so time for us to claim our limitless reality and to put it into practice. And we're never going to know who we are and what we can do until we test ourselves, until we start building that muscle. Peter had no idea what he could do until he stepped out of that boat. So what I'm inviting you to do today is just to look in your life and look where you're stressed. Are you stressed about money? Are you stressed about time? Wherever you're stressed, wherever you're worried, wherever you have a scarcity conversation, that is exactly what Edwin would say. Honey, that is where you need to give. Wherever you are feeling lack in that area, what I invite you to do this week is to claim the limitless reality that is within, surrounding, and imbuing everything, including you. You are the limitless reality, folks. And wherever you are feeling stressed, wherever you are feeling scarce, this week, we take it on, because I'm, I'm with you. Okay, everybody is really quiet right now, and everybody's like. <laughs> okay, can we breathe? <sighs> so this week, okay, let's claim the limitless reality. Is there a limitless reality? Yes. Really? Really, is there a limitless reality? Are you that limitless reality? Yes. Okay. And wherever you're scarce, think about it. You know where it is. Every single one of you know in your life right now where you are experiencing scarcity. This week, will you take it on? Give. Give. Wherever you're feeling scarce, that is the place that you give. And not just one. And not just one little baby. It won't start out with a little baby. You can give in terror if you choose that. I don't affirm that with you, but I promise you, it's just like working out, you'll develop the muscle. And please, as you say yes to this practice, will you come back and tell me what unfolds in your life? Yes. Good. Okay. Take another deep breath. All right. Let's affirm together. I claim the reality of life's limitless flow. I live and give from that knowing. And let's do woohoo. Woohoo. And so it is. All right.